You know what's cool? Vikings. You know what's not cool? White supremacists. But for some reason, white supremacists seem to have this obsession with Vikings. And if you take a closer look, on the top is the Valknut, which is a Viking symbol. Oh. Tyrunan är ju absolut en del av, av det. Så det är inte bara att det symboliserar strid och seger, det symboliserar Norden också. Our grant arrests and charges against two Southeast Michigan men linked to a white supremacist group, which the Attorney General is calling a gang. So I thought, why not go over where this kind of obsession comes from? Whether or not there's any merit to separate the truth and the legend from what the Vikings were and what they stood for. So let's start off with a simple question. Who were the Vikings? They're people originally from Scandinavia, so we think of today as Norway, Denmark, Sweden, and we tend to think of these ginormous, blue-eyed, blonde giants that just go around raping, pillaging, and plundering with really cool round shields and horns on their helmets and use these really cool boats that nobody else seems to have. We think of these brutish savages. And while there is some merit to this, Vikings, or well, Norsemen, had pretty tough lives. It's easy to imagine that only the strong survive. If disease, winters, or battle didn't kill you, your neighbor might because violence was very commonplace. If you ended up marrying someone that you didn't want to marry, you ended up just killing the person that you wanted to marry. If someone kills your father, you kill them, and so on. And don't even get me started on the 10-year-olds who eat snake poison for fun because they're just built different. Most of what we have about Vikings can actually be traced back to the 13th century. Mostly sagas, stories that follow a particular person or a family. And these sagas were written by Christians, so they kind of wanted Christianity to play a civilizing role in society. So what we read about Vikings, we have to take with a grain of salt. There's a lot of violence going on in these sagas because for the most part, Vikings were meant to be depicted as these bloody savages. But if you read into the sagas, you can truly see that there's a sort of structure in society and people act within this realm of civilized violence, if that makes sense. In Nail Sagas, Nail Sons end up killing a man for making fun of their father for not having a beard. And although that's not necessarily something I would kill someone over, it is done with a reason. While in the same saga, this other character named Runner ends up killing twice in the same bloodline, we see this sort of excessive violence. And because of this, he ends up essentially sealing his own death warrant. You need to have a reason to kill. You can't just kill only men, is what's important. More than that, killing is expensive. The practice of Wellgard originated in the Viking Age. Essentially, it's compensation for killing a man. Nile and Runner almost go broke because their wives keep killing each other's servants. It's, it's a whole ordeal. The eventual success and influence that Viking culture had was really about settlements and exchange of ideas, culture, trade. We tend to remember conquest and killing because, well, I mean, that's simply what's more interesting. Why learn about trade when you can learn about the blood eagle? Quick side note, the blood eagle is a horrific practice. Essentially, an eagle would be marked onto your skin before your ribs would be hacked with an axe and stretched out to create a pair of wings. If you're still alive by the end of that, they take salt and rub it on your wounds. But essentially, being a Viking was hard. You were a farmer as much as you were a warrior. Even in the sagas, we see that the best of the heroes were praised not only for outsmarting, but outfighting dragons. You had to have superior strength. Now let's fast forward a bit to the rise of the Nazis. When the Nazis were deciding to trace back their ancestry, they wanted to make it be special. They wanted to be different from the rest. In a way, they kind of wanted to be descended from gods, not actually descended from gods, like supposedly kings and queens were, because that sounded a little bit insane, but descended from some sort of mythical group of people that made them be superior. And so they trace back the kings and queens of Germany to the Vikings. But essentially this gave the Nazis an idea that Germans were descend from this race of superhumans from the Nordic countries. So the concept that Vikings could have been white supremacists is honestly insane. 
because they weren't going around raping, pillaging, and plundering because their lord Odin commanded it. They were doing it because originally it was profitable, easy gold. But then they started to realize that raiding is actually not that profitable. I mean, it's a very dangerous line of work. So eventually, Vikings started to settle down, mixing their cultures, traditions, people. I mean, they were working and marrying people from all over the world. So they probably wouldn't be down with this idea of thinking that they were superior just because they're white. So the exceptional thing about Vikings was not that they were these purebred group of northern warriors. It was that they weren't Christian, and Christians were writing their history. So that's why we don't see a focus on trading and settlements. Viking settlements were all about gaining wealth from the form of agricultural land. They weren't colonizers interested in creating a Viking empire and spreading their religion. That's why in places where Vikings were the majority of the population, Scandinavian cultures dominated, like Greenland and Iceland, but in places where Vikings were the minority of the population, like Norway and Russia, Viking culture integrated pretty quickly. It mixed. So Vikings definitely wouldn't be against adopting the cultures of other people and mixing with them, living with them, loving. The Vikings even arrived to the Byzantine Empire. And I mean, those people weren't white, I don't think. Heck, when the Vikings made it to North America, they didn't end up killing 95% of the population. They just traded and left. Unlike later European powers. So with this, I think we can answer one very simple question. Vikings would be against white supremacy. They definitely wouldn't be for the group of people that play dress up and they go storm the capital. I think they'd also find it hilarious because Vikings actually didn't wear horns on their helmets. They probably also wouldn't be for the hate that comes with this rigid gender ideology. I mean, even Thor wore a dress. So I'm gonna say it now. No white supremacist will be, or ever will be, Welcomed into Valhalla, the great hall where heroes go after they die. Okay, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and move on to your next video. If you have any ideas of videos that you want me to make, maybe Vikings and women, let me know. Bye.